When I first started my community college experience, I was very worried and nervous. I continuously did not perform well in my math classes in high school. I was concerned with my writing a lot. I didn't really know the proper structures and how to set up a college level essay. I felt like I was still very elementary with my vocabulary and sentence structure. So in the past, basic skills, remediation has been in place to support students, provide them with the skills that we thought they needed in order to get them ready for transfer level classes. All that remediation or all those extra courses just provided another wall in front of them. I ran into one of my favorite students, Tiffany, and I said, how are you doing, Tiffany? It's nice to see you. And she said, oh, I, I had to drop, drop out of college. I ran out of money. Honestly, Tiffany could have taken transfer level the first semester with support. She absolutely could have done that. And then she would have been at university, and that never happened for her. The main reason to tackle the basic skills issue or the developmental education issue is that it's an equity imperative. Again, we know that a large majority of our students of color have been directed to basic skills or developmental education, yet a large majority of them have not succeeded. And it's not really been the fault of the students. We're acknowledging that. Well, the first challenge was obviously the language barrier, uh, which I think most students um, who come from other countries uh, face that. So many of our students, first generation students, just underrepresented students, foster students, that n I hate to say it this way, never had a chance. We didn't think that was the case. We thought they had a chance. We thought access was all that was needed. We have to give them that chance by ensuring that they learn to believe in themselves and understand we believe in them and have those positive experiences. There's been some significant changes at the legislative front and also with the California State University in issuing some new executive orders on how to better prepare students for college. We developed a certain number of programs over the summer for students to take part in on-campus instruction for a few weeks over the summer so they can get up to college level readiness in math and English. In the San Diego and Imperial counties, we have a really unique collaboration called SEDICA, and that stands for the San Diego and Imperial Counties Community College Association. And in essence, we bring together all of the higher education segments, the community colleges, um, the four-year universities, and the K through 12, and we collaborate to ensure that students have a seamless uh, transition from one segment to the next. It's really easy to get into our little, uh, our like our area is like, this is Palomar College and I'm doing everything I can here. But if we don't connect either back to the high schools or forward to the university, then we, we won't be able to achieve anywhere near as what we could, you know, where we're more connected with each other. When we were working with the high schools, what we were really surprised to find is the willingness that the faculty and the administration had to work with us, to partner with the university. We've done this through several different workshops, focusing on different topics. They just wanted to come, they wanted to learn, they wanted to know how to better prepare their students to be successful at the university. If we're not talking to each other and we're not aligning what we're doing, then there's no consistency across institutions or even across classrooms within an institution. It made sense to go through and completely revamp how I taught. And I love the stuff that I taught previously. And I love the way that I taught it previously. But I also had to come to the realization that in order to give my students the best possible outcomes, I needed to follow what we had put together. It was so great to sit around a room and talk with other faculty members and brainstorm solutions to problems that we all had or hear about a solution to a problem that maybe only I have. We must have spent an entire semester doing a whole lot of asking questions and exploration. And then we got down into that more detailed work of how do we put it all together so that anybody who walks into this campus comes in and says, I'm teaching English 115. What am I supposed to do? We can sit there and say, here's the curriculum. It wasn't administrators talking to administrators, which is important also, but it was faculty 
in the same discipline, talking about our students. These are our students. They may take a class here, they may take two classes at Cuyamaca, and they may take a class at San Diego State. Oh my goodness, the benefits to students when we align our, our practices is enormous. Because we can, for one, inform them what's gonna happen when they transfer. That helps really prime those students so that when they do make that leap from Southwestern College, Cuyamaca, Grossmont, Mesa, City, wherever, Palomar, they know that they can walk into any upper division class when they go to the university and have the skills so that they can be successful. Previously, we had a multi-tiered sequence of classes that were, uh, they didn't count for transfer credit for students in English, math, and ESL. There was a math 10, which was a basic arithmetic class, and then 15, which was a little bit higher. Students had to first finish the class, and then enroll in the next class, and then finish that class, and then enroll in the next class. And then college algebra, and it was broken into two classes, and then all of the AA students had to have math 60. And there were all these points at which students could leave and then it would go up to transfer level. So there were just class after class after class. Acceleration is a way of eliminating those exit points. And instead of having lots of classes that didn't count for college level credit, uh, either eliminating it altogether or using a different model so that you know more students would reach their goals. The curricular aspects of AB 705 for Palomar College involve doing away with a number of the pre-transfer level courses and having the transfer level course uh, stand on its own, as it, as it always has, but also having the option of a, um, a co-requisite support class. The students would receive extra maybe sentence level assistance or extra work on maybe topic sentence or thesis that they wouldn't normally get in just the English 100 course itself. That's a, a big shift in, in the way our curriculum is. Instead of having to come through three classes to get to transfer level and then you know, you're hoping you, you've passed, it just really collapses that, um, that pathway considerably. Once you are in, in those classes, um, you feel motivated because the fact that you know you're taking two classes at the same time, that pushes you. A big metric for us is how many students complete transfer level English within one year. In 2011, in the pre-acceleration, the overall one-year completion rate of transfer level English for students was 21%. For our African-American students, that was 4%. For our Latinx students, it was 17%. So pretty big equity gaps, not a high rate. Last year, that overall rate had jumped from 21% to 67%. For our African American students, it jumped from 4% to 52%. For our Latinx students, it was 67%. And so just thinking about the number of people that that impacts and how many more hundreds of students every year are making that big milestone on their journeys is very exciting. Acceleration is not about taking shortcuts or rushing through things. It's giving the students, kind of honoring and valuing what they bring to the table as far as their experience. Just because they can't do certain basic skills, it doesn't stop them from comprehending those bigger, those bigger, harder, tougher questions. So one of the things that's so very important is teachers are in the classroom. And as a result, we often look at our course success rates as whether or not we've been successful at something. And getting faculty to recognize that it isn't your own personal course success rates that's so important anymore, not that that's not important, it is. But the most important piece of data that we can look at is a student's throughput rate is instrumental in making changes. No matter where they're coming from, all right, they can come from another country, they can come as a refugee to our country, they can come from any socioeconomic status possible, 
but we're working to really try and help everybody to have the career that they'd want, to be able to support their family, you know, support themselves. And to me, that is about social justice. It's about providing equity so that everybody can, can be on a, a level playing field of sorts. They make sure you get through, um, through college. You, you finish, you, you move forward. Now we can realize, yes, this was well worth it. And I think the reason why people want to continue is because of the success that they've seen. The efforts that we're employing right now through the Basic Skills Partnership Grant Initiative, AB705, and all of this developmental ed reform, it's helping students to achieve their dreams and have better lives for themselves and for their families. We're in the business of making students' dreams come true. That's the bottom line. Having seven siblings, I'm the first one having a bachelor's degree here, which is a kind of proud feeling for me and obviously for my parents because of their hard work, because of all the instructors' hard work, I'm here now with a degree. They're seeing that this person wants to transfer and we're not going to make her take all these different classes just to, for her to take this one transferable class. She's going to take this transferable class with the help that she needs and then she's going to transfer and get her degree and I really appreciate that. I feel like I'm way more prepared for a four-year university with the tools that this community college has given me and I'm so beyond thankful for that. You're changing people's lives for the better. So we are actually taking students and we're helping them to get a degree that they never would have gotten before. The traditional idea of a liberal education is to free people to experience the world in new and better ways. And if we can do that, and if we can be one piece of that to help our students have that experience in this lifetime, then we're doing something good because they can pass that on to somebody else.